Hello, hello, hello. Come on in. Come on in to the lounge. Wow. It's good to be back another week with you. And I hope that um, the same is true for you. And uh, so as I see, start to see you guys coming in because I recognize there is a bit of a delay. All right. There we are. Popping on, popping on, popping on. Thank you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Let me know you're here. Likes and hearts are good. A little bit of love. I see you. Uh, man, I have to tell you, thank you for coming back <laughs> because last week was interesting. And as you can see, we have our orientation corrected this week. So I get you get to see the full screen and it's, and it's um, as intended. And so I'm excited about that. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to everyone. And uh, thank you for coming to join us in the lounge. Uh, looking forward to your participation again today because uh, I think this is another topic that's going to going to rest well, but I have some questions for you and, you know, I'm going to give you some answers. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to give you some questions. <laughs> you may have some for me, but, um, definitely want to, Hey, Kev, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be good because I really want this to, um, to help. Dr. Mimi. Hello. Welcome. 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 Congratulations. That is a tremendous achievement. I remember a year ago when you were talking about it and you got her done. So congratulations to you. For sure. So yeah, keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in. So welcome to Sip and Chill with Coach Reg. And I um, want to tell you a little bit, some of you are new to me and I'm new to you. Some of you are actually familiar with Sip and Chill with Coach Reg, but wanted to, and I apologize for this background noise. Somebody's getting a delivery in my neighborhood. I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, Sip and Chill. Sip and Chill with Coach Rudge is a virtual lounge, interactive lounge, where members learn to start, strengthen, and sustain healthy relationships. And so in this period, in, you know, in Sip and Chill, the goal is to deliver quality content, right? That is intended to add value to your life. And, and from time to time, we're going to have, um, we'll have guests on with the exact same intention, right? Uh, to, do, to deliver quality content that adds value to you. So, who am I? I'm Coach Reg, and I'm a relationship coach. I'm also the founder of Are You Coached, a relationship coaching platform geared toward helping individuals identify, participate, strengthen, and sustain healthy relationships. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah, so, so just quickly with Shelter and Play, I'm sorry, Sip and Chill. Sip and Chill is actually Shelter in Place and Chill. Right. And at the beginning, we stood this up maybe a month or so ago with the intent to address relationship concerns, questions, challenges or what have you, things you just want to talk about and discuss um, while we are quarantined. Right. And so I was able to, you know, I kind of saw shelter in place. And, man, that acronym SIP. We can make that work. And so that's kind of how we did it. But it actually is shelter in place and chill. But if you if you choose to sip and chill, it is quite all right. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Enjoy yourself. It's okay if you have a beverage because <laughs> I may take a sip of this, what's in this glass, which I'm not going to tell you what's in here, but uh, <laughs> I may take a sip along the way. So yeah, that's just a bit more about Sip and Chill. So again, Coach Reg, Relationship Coach. Um, I have been featured on um, nationally syndicated podcasts and radio programs, and you can totally check that out if you choose. On our, um, on our website, areyoucoached.com. So who are my clients? Uh, my clients are high achieving women, um, professionals who have attained many of their professional goals, but do not yet have the interpersonal relationship that best serves her um, and compliments her, right? And so sometimes I get asked the question, you know, why do you just work with women and, and not men? Well, the truth is I do work with men. I just don't market directly to men. Um, and the reason my my clients are high achievers, I'm sorry, high achieving women, is because they tend to care more about relationships than, than my gender, quite frankly. And they are more inclined to achieve and work towards attaining the results that she desires. And also, and lastly, I coach her to, I coach her to consider herself more, include herself more, and most of all, love herself more when it comes to making decisions that directly impact her, okay? 
And so that kind of coaching resonates differently coming from a man than a well-intending girlfriend who has an opinion. So what I've learned is when a woman is clear on her value and worth, her choices and, her choices and decisions will reflect. Conversely, when she isn't clear, the same is true. So yeah, what is coaching? All right, so I know that it's new to some. Some people think or confuse or sometimes uh, mix uh, coaching and counseling and therapy and all that this in the same. And it really isn't. It absolutely is not, quite frankly. Uh, coaching is not therapy, nor is coaching counseling. Uh, coaching is a way to help people improve and move beyond where they are when they recognize that they want to be in a better place, in a different place, and they're ready to do the work to get there. Okay. Counseling and therapy, quite frankly, is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Okay. And so as a professional coach, I have relationships with mental health care professionals and there are resources of mine that I will refer out for persons who uh, come to me for coaching and who are, who are not yet ready for coaching. Okay. So once we coach or once you, um, if you decide you're a person who needs coaching, wants coaching, what have you, then what we would do is schedule a chemistry session, right? And a chemistry session basically is to ascertain those areas that you want to improve upon uh, to determine if I can help you with those things and to determine if you're ready for coaching, right? And if all those things check out that need to and I can help you and you want the assistance, then we talk about next steps in terms of get, getting you started, okay? Now, we've gotten all that out of the way. Let's get to why you guys really came here, <laughs> okay? So, trusting you more. This actually came from one of the members last week. And Michelle Carrington, thank you again uh, for suggesting it. Um, and it, and apparently, it, it, again, one of those topics that resonates. And so, what I want to do is, before I get into what I want to ask, share with you, I want to ask you a question. Because I told you this, I want this to be participatory. I want you guys to interact with me and share with me. So, let me ask you. Trusting you more. What will it take? And hello to everyone who popped on. I didn't get to say hello to you yet. I think I saw Carol, Andrea, uh, Dawn. So I may have missed some, but if you're here, thank you for being here. Happy you are. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday. And uh, yay for the weekend, right? <laughs> or cheers to the weekend. Whichever works for you. <laughs> but anyway, so quickly. Well, not quickly, but just share. Um, what do you think? What do you think trusting you more will take? Hey, Stacey, how are you? <laughs> I'm sorry if I missed you when you popped on. And I know we have a delay, so I'm going to try to wait um, a few moments before we get into it. I just want to get where you are. Because, again, this topic was something that, um, that people wanted to know more about, and I want to, want to share. Hey, Ty. Happy Friday. Okay, so no one wants to share, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, trusting you more. Trusting you more. What is that going to take? Well, hey, Tanya, there are five things that I believe that um, if you get this right, it's going to certainly help you uh, learn to trust you more. Now, before I get into those five, I want to give you a few more seconds because again, I recognize there's a delay, but if you want to just throw out an idea, it's okay. There's no right or wrongs, guys. We're just talking, knowing who you are. Thank you, Tanya. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great, that's a great one. That's a really good one because believe it or not, the things that I want to talk to you about, guess all fit that knowing who you are is a part of. The things that I want to share with you are a part of knowing who you are. And when you're clear on that, guess what? You'll learn to trust you more. All right. Uh, so this says listening to your intuition. Very good. I like that too, Sunita. That is absolutely true. Absolutely true. And that's part of trusting, right? And that's like a muscle that you strengthen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too. Michelle, slowing down enough to think and know how you feel. Man, you guys are smart. I love it. I love it. And that's exactly right. Now, the key is, right, to trust that. You know, trust the intuition, trust in yourself, slowing down to actually process what you're experiencing, how you feel about it, how it's causing you to feel, what's coming up for you. And... It may, it may require sitting there a little longer, right, to really um, 
understand and digest what's going on. It doesn't mean that you move right away. It simply means that, hey, I got to take this. This has to I got to work with this thing. I have to figure out what's the best thing for me. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. And sometimes you have to you have to take a moment to get comfortable before you can move. Uh, Stacy says trusting more often comes from going through some things in life and overcoming challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Like a proven track record. And that's you guys are doing great. You guys are doing great. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up for you. This is great. Stephanie, knowing what you want. Okay. Michelle, not overthinking, absolutely. Allowing yourself to feel. Man, you guys are yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Very good. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey Andre, how you doing? So yeah, let's get to it. So I told you, and we'll do these things in, in a list of five, right? The five things that I think that um will really help you become more successful with trusting you more. And these are the things, this is what I believe it's going to take for that to happen. So number one, and I, oh, get your pen and paper. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that. You might want to jot these down. It's just a thought. And if you don't, you'll catch it on the replay. But yeah, go ahead and jot them down if you like. <laughs> um, oh, somebody said, <laughs> hey, Demetrius. <laughs> hey, you know what? You're never late. You're never late for Sip and Chill. It's a lounge. You know what I mean? So welcome, though. Glad you're here. <laughs> Glad you're here. So yeah, number one, number one, number one. So these are five things that I think that you should, that you must know, be, and do to develop and strengthen your trusting you more muscle. Okay. Number one, know you are capable. The first C. There's five C's I'm going to give you. The first is know that you're capable. Know that you're capable. Um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are able to make good choices and decisions and, and removing self-doubt. Um, someone mentioned about le intuition. You leverage your intuition. You leverage your intuition as your built-in ally, right? Because you know when something feels right. You may not be ready to lean into it, but you know and you also know when something doesn't. And I believe you probably also know when you're making a choice or considering making a choice that doesn't feel good and will likely be at your expense. So re resist that, okay? Resist that. Know that you're capable. Don't doubt you. And remove self-doubt by leaning into it, okay? So number one is know you're capable. Know you are capable. Number two, know that you are competent. Okay? You're competent. You are a proven commodity. Regardless of what's happened in the past, regardless of we all make choices. And like someone said a moment ago, we learn from those things. It's not just having an experience, but we actually learn from the experience, knowing that we're confident. No, I'm sorry, knowing that we're competent, that we're a proven commodity because we've, de we've, we've demonstrated that we can make good decisions and choices. And, everyone, and, and when we make choices and decisions that aren't so great, we simply course correct to get to the desired result or the better place. So competency. OK, capable. Number one, know you're competent. Number two, because the whole point is trusting you more. And I promise you. That as you understand these things and practice these things and put these things in place, these idea, these ideas and these thoughts, they will make you better. They will they will develop a strength that you haven't experienced, and it's absolutely okay. And I really want you and hope that you will choose to embrace that. Number three, be confident. Okay, confidence comes by doing. Confidence comes by repetition. It doesn't just, you know, fall out of the sky. You have to put some work in, you know, and being confident says that you are enough. You are worthy of all things excellent. If that's love, if that's kindness, if it's respect, you got to be confident and, and, and demand that, command that. Okay. Your past successes are what you lean into 
to build your confidence, right? Like we talked about a moment ago, you've had some, you've had some experiences, you made some choices and all those things, but the things that you got right, did you not feel good about? It's like, man, that wasn't so bad after all. Well, I could do that again. Because here's the deal, you're getting stronger. Because as we, go, as, we, as we experience life and live through life, we learn, we grow, and we develop. And that is an intentional act. Confidence happens intentionally because you put one foot in front of the other and you stink and go do it. Simply just go do it. It's going to be uncomfortable. But I promise you, when you achieve whatever you set out to do, all of a sudden, you know, shoulders back, head up, smiles. Hey, how are you? It's, it's a beautiful thing. It really, really is. Just making sense? We got a couple, a few more to go. A couple more to go. Just making sense? Talk to me. Hmm. You know, hearts work. Or not hearts. Or, you know, thumbs up or something just to let me know you're there. And we're tracking so far. Whew. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. All right. All right. So, number four. Number four. Be courageous. Be courageous. Because we're talking about what's, what it's going to take to trust you more. Be courageous. Fill the fear and do it anyway. Okay? I want to offer, uh, I, read, I read this in a book some years ago. Actually, I think it was called Fill the Fear and Do It Anyway. And in that book, it talked about two paradigms. Um, one was a no-win model and the other was a no-lose model. Okay? And the no-win model suggests that I can't win anyway, so why bother trying? That's not what we do here at Sip and Chill, <laughs> okay? We go with a no-lose model. What does that mean? I have nothing to lose, so why not go for it? That's where I want you to hang out because that's going to develop that competence, that confidence, and that knowledge of knowing that you're capable because you got to do those things, right? And when you do, you demonstrate competence over time because you learn what to do, what not to do. And in that process, you're developing your confidence and you're growing in your confidence. So yeah, be courageous. Feel that fear and do it anyway. Trust in that intuition, leaning into it, trusting you, knowing that you're capable, okay, to make whatsoever happen. Because it's not absent of consideration of other people. We're talking about considering you, loving you more, considering you more, including you more in the choices and decisions that you make and that directly impact your life. They don't have to be at your expense. They shouldn't be. Okay? Lastly, commit. Commit. Okay? Commit to developing your new habit of trusting you more that each decision through the lenses of your no-lose paradigm, okay? Because if you commit to you, commit to trusting you, is it going to be uncomfortable? Sure, but it's a worthwhile endeavor. It absolutely is. And I would encourage you to get around people who support you, advocate for you, champion you, who encourage you. Not someone who's saying, yeah, I should do this. If I were you, we're not talking about those folks, okay? We're talking about someone who allows you to learn and grow and encourages you to be the best you you can be. And sometimes that requires coaching. Yeah, that's so true, right? And that's what coaches do. That's what I do. That's one of the things I, help, I do with my clients in terms of working, them, working with them to help them move beyond the space they're in to improve, to get to where they want to be, okay? By helping them to develop, reminding them of the things they said they wanted, and questioning, right? Primarily, talking less, listening more, right? To what matters to them and asking questions predicated upon what they have shared to compel more thought to promote better decisions. Commit. Commit to you. So yeah, you missed number five. Don't worry, it'll be on, um, <laughs> fantastic, Cindy. It's okay, Andre, it'll be on replay, but I'll, I'll definitely give them to you again. I'll give them to you again. Uh, number one is know that you're capable, okay? The first C is capable. 
The second C, the five C's, the second C is competent. No, you are competent. Number three, B, confident. Four, be courageous. And five, do commit. Remember I said the things that you must know, be, and do. Okay? So, yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, it's we don't have to be here forever, but I just want you to know these are things. That's This is what's going to take. Now, if you need more help with this, obviously, you contact me and we can set up a chemistry session and we can work through whatever the things are. Or we can talk about them, sorry. If, in fact, the things that you want to work on and I can help you with, yeah, we can see if it's a fit. If it's not, no big deal. But this is important because in order to trust you more, to develop the muscle, to trust the muscles, to build the muscles necessary to, to learn to trust you more, this is what's required. Notice I said, I'm not telling you what to do. These are things that you can do, that you have to do, that, that, that no one can do for you. And if you do these things, you will become stronger. And you will trust you more and question you less. It doesn't mean that you get it. All. It doesn't, it's not going to mean that you get it right each time. But you have a clear formula, if you will, of what to do. And ask yourself, am I, am I demonstrating being capable? Am I demonstrating competence? Am I demonstrating confidence? Am I being courageous? Have I committed to trusting me more? Have I committed to the new paradigm? See? So these th th that's why this is so cool, right? And one of the reasons I love this is because, again, it's for you to figure out and me to help you get there, right? If that's what you need in your life. But this is, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. So your turn. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm here for it. Are there any questions? Please feel free. And while you are thinking about your questions, if you should have any, you're welcome, Andrea. Absolutely, Stacy. You do have the power. Absolutely. I think I might have missed some, some, some scrolls, but um, yes, yes. I want to ask you. This makes sense, right? I mean, I guess a lot of people are getting it, but I want to make sure it makes sense. And if you have questions, let's hear them. Hey, Auntie. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. So while you're typing or not, I'm going to sip. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's good. All right, Michelle. Thank you, Stacy. Michelle, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's um. That's kind of how it goes. Wow. We got this one done quick. <laughs> But I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for a few moments because I don't want you to, um, um, I don't want to, to get us out of here before um, we get the questions answered. Uh, sip and help. So yeah, it can, Stace, for sure. <laughs> it sure can. So let me ask you this. Um, are there some, are there some things that you have struggled with in the past that you struggled with trusting you more? Do you believe that these these and if you're doing these things going forward, if you implement these things going forward, do you believe that you will no longer struggle, or do you think, uh, man, this is kind of this may help me get through? Um, because it's just reminders. It's just reminders. They're, they're really self self checks, right? Um, how am I doing? And you can ask yourself these questions and remind yourself that you're capable. Remind yourself that you're competent. But you got to ask yourself, am I being, am I demonstrating the confidence and courage and am I committing to, to me and to making better choices and decisions? Um, that's, that's so, so hugely important. And no one can do it for you, but you can. And I promise you're going to be all the better for doing it. You really will. Yeah. So. Yeah. Happy Friday. Okay, Cindy. Let's see, confidence is a struggle because I'm. I'm always learning. Yeah, but you know what? That's the beauty of it. You're strengthening that muscle, right? Because always learning is good. It's like evolving, right? Competence doesn't mean that you know everything that you're learning. It just means that you you can hold on to what you do know, what you have learned, and you can trust that, 
right? And believe it or not, those things that you have learned will, will guide you in the, in the things that you haven't. Because when you start to doubt yourself in that new space, what will happen is you can, um, you can draw from your past successes, right? To help you with the new thing, the, the thing that's unknown yet. And it's only unknown because you haven't learned it yet. But once you master it, guess what? You can add that to your competence list, your list of competencies. You sure can. Wait a minute. I think I saw something. There was a question or a thought about, oh, Tanya says the fine line of confidence and arrogance. Um, yeah, there is. And I'm not speaking to arrogance. Let me be very clear. I hope I hope that I didn't. Um, I hope, hope I didn't. I hope, hope I was clear. No, I'm not suggesting arrogance. What I'm saying is confidence is believing in you. It's believing that you know that you're capable. It, it you, you and, that, and that exudes from you. It, it, it is knowing that you're conf, you're competent. And when you know that you're capable and competent, you have the courage to be competent, not arrogant. Because if you're think about it, in your current in whatever you do for a living, and if you've done it for a long time, it's fair to say that you're capable and you're competent to perform that job and have done so successfully for a period of time. It doesn't make you arrogant because, but you're right. There's some people who don't know the difference, Tanya, and that could be the challenge. But I don't think that's anyone here. At least I hope not. Only confidence. Only confidence. Okay. Uh, Stacy said, I believe it will help you navigate through things. It will also take referencing those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. Gotcha, son. Okay. Chris says, it's often hard to be in cheerleader mode for yourself when you're wired to be a cheerleader for others. We as women, particularly black women, are not taught to flex. So it's not innate. That's my that's my struggle. I think that's what she says. Struggle. Okay, gotcha. So Cree, that's fair. Um, so what we're talking about is a bit of a paradigm shift, right? It's going to require your believing in you, and you can you can multitask. You can you can totally cheer for others, but cheering for others doesn't mean you lose you, because you matter just as much. Your value is here. It is not to be like, it's not to, to fall back into the shadows because, well, I'm supposed, no, 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 no. There's some things, guess what? We got to unlearn, okay? There's some things we got to unlearn. And we're talking about learning some new things. And these five things right here will help you overcome that struggle. I promise you, because it speaks to your value. It speaks to your contribution. It speaks to what you're able to do, see? And which not only what you're able to do, what you've demonstrated that you've done, right? And that, and because of it, you have this courage and you can commit to that space. It doesn't mean you forsake everything else. It simply means they coexist now. Does that make sense? Let's see. Okay. Hey, Karen, how are you? Let's see, Dawn, overcoming... By finding a solution and turns joy into the fear of failure. Yeah, overcoming by finding a solution. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Wow. So Stacy says she's a mental health care professional. And she's, yeah. So here's the thing. I don't want you to overlook you anymore. <laughs> okay? I want you to consider you. I want you to remember you. I want you to include you. If you want to cheer for somebody, start with yourself. Okay. If you want to champion someone, start with you. It's not, it's you, you deserve more. You are valued more and more is absolutely necessary. So please don't lose sight of that. Yeah. So I get the struggle and that's why this is important because we all need ways to remember how to be stronger, how to, to, cause we lose sight. You know, we get into the day to day, whatever we get into, you know, whatever life brings us. And sometimes we forget ourselves. I don't want that to be you. It doesn't have to be you because you matter. Stacey, I like that you're working on it. That's the beauty of it, right? Cause guess what? We all are right. No one's gotten this thing figured out. I, I'm not suggesting that at all. Right. Excuse me, the good news is awareness and working on it. Because as you do that, we're evolving. Like Cindy said a bit ago, the things that she hasn't done, you know, she's like, I struggle with the competence. Well, again, it's it the way we get better is to do. 
you know, I'm not exactly comfortable talking to you guys on this live when you can see me and I can see you. But guess what? The message is important enough to get out. So I have to overcome that challenge. Right. And yes, I'm a bit comfortable because I've done these kinds of things a bit. But, you know, I still I still want to polish my stuff. You know, I'm not as I'm not as good as I want to be, but I'm better than I was. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's definitely good. Definitely good. Let's see. Let's see if you watch your self education. Yeah, a self check in. Absolutely, Tony. Absolutely. Because when you can't get to that person to remind you, this is a way that you can remind yourself. It's just a cup of quick, some questions you can keep in your phone, <laughs> keep them nearby. When life comes at you and you're not just quite sure, or you take a blow and you're like, man, hey, look, you still got it. Get back in the game. Get back in the game. And, and you can. Um, because it definitely is a, um, it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, and you know what, Mo? It is for all of us. That's why it's day by day. This exercise or these five things, our lives are day to day, right? And so some days we knock it out of the park and some days we're like, man, do I even know what I'm doing? For example, I'm a golfer. You guys probably see my golf clubs in the back, right? <laughs> so here's my point. There's some days when I hit the golf course, man, I think I should be on tour, right? And I can go back the very next day and it's like I never picked up a club. Yeah, but I'm the common denominator. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So I can't be so high on myself and then get so low. I have to know that, okay, I'll get it tomorrow. I can keep working. I can keep practicing. I can keep remembering, right? What I did how I play, what caused me to play well the day that I really played well. And when I didn't play well, what did I do? What could I have done better? Maybe that's some area that I need to spend some time on, right? So some of you have said it's hard to stay focused. Um, yeah, I, I need more than that. I, I would like more than that when you say that, um, when you say it's hard to focus, what, what exactly is hard to stay focused on? Yes, Karen, it is a balance. 100%. 100%. See, Nikki said, um, you know, so it helps me do the self check-ins because we get absorbed in taking care of others and don't realize they're not a team. I love it. I love it. Nikki, thank you, youngest daughter, for me. She's awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. We need those reminders. We need people to kind of keep us balanced, to help us remain balanced. So those of you who said focused... Um, struggle with focus. Please give me a bit more. What what exactly are you struggling to focus? Um, oh, I'm sorry. You said you lose focus. What exactly are you losing focus on? Um, yeah, yeah. She's awesome, Nick. She's absolutely awesome. awesome. Um, so yeah, I'll wait for that because I want to speak to what is prompting or causing the loss of focus. Because maybe there's a suggestion that could help you. I just want to understand exactly a little bit more, I'm sorry, um, about where that struggle comes in. And I think, Mo, I know you said that, but I think someone else said the same. And I just want to get clarity on, on that. And unfortunately, I can't tell if you're typing, so just want to hold space until I see the response before we continue. Okay. Okay. So, oh, and, oh I'm sorry. I forgot to say this. If you're uncomfortable um, asking your question in this space, it's okay. Feel free to um, DM me in, in the community and within Sip and Show. And I'll um I'll try to get your question answered. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that I uh, um get your question answered as well. Okay, Dawn says I stepped outside to have a concert in my yard and <laughs> I gave me three new clients to learn. So wow, how about that? <laughs> that sounds like a courageous um that sounds like an action, a courageous act, born from confidence. And your ability, knowing that you were capable and competent. That's what it sounds like. Just saying. And because you committed to you, you did the first four. See how that works? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. All right. I thought I had a 
had a question or a statement. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Um, we've been here for a little bit and, uh, I'm glad you guys are here with me. Um, next week's going to be awesome too. That topic came from Cheryl Shaw. She's also a member of the community and, um, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you and, and getting your thoughts, because again, this is, this is really, um, this is really a, a great forum, you know, for these discussions. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're appreciating it. I really, really am. Um, and I'm glad you attended also. Um, yeah, this is great because I want to understand what matters to you so we can talk about it, right? Because the thing about being a male relationship coach, the message resonates differently with women than it will your good girlfriend. Not that your good girlfriend doesn't know what she's talking about. That's not what I'm saying to you. But as a man, I'm not going to encourage you to tell you, or I'm not going to tell you well, you're doing this wrong. First of all, I don't tell you anything. I ask you questions and you conclude your own answers. That's the first indicator that this makes more sense <laughs> because I'm not imposing my thoughts onto you, my ideas and opinions as to what I think you should do. If anything, I'm going to ask you questions again so you can get to the best answer for you. Yeah. So yeah, um, so thank you for the topics. Thank you, Michelle, for this one. Thank you, Cheryl, for the one that's coming next week. Um, I will announce it, but I got to give you something to look forward to. If I tell you, I mean, yeah, you'll come. That's great. But, you know, look for the advertisement next week on that one as well. Um, so I don't see that question. You know, I was, I was hoping it was going to come back on the focus. Um, but again, like I said, if you're uncomfortable dropping it here, please uh, feel free to directly message me within the community and we can totally uh, get that answer. Um, you're welcome, Dawn. Absolutely. 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 So if there are no questions, um, guess we can wrap this up. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. One second. One second. Um, just have to say on a girl's trip, wish we had you. That's a second chill. So that's a pick your brain. <laughs> and you know what? I am for hire. I am for, not, you know, I love to travel, but yeah, but no, it's just, <laughs> in all sincerity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because I understand that there's value for women coming from a man because some men, some of us will tell you what not to do. Someone will tell you what you're doing wrong. And it's not about that. It's about if, if it checks out with your values, if it, if it aligns with your worth and your understanding of it, then it may be worth a consideration. But you still get to vet that because you're capable, because you're competent, because you're developing confidence and you're courageous enough to do it and you commit to you. So it doesn't matter what someone else says because you now can check their comments out on this, these five C's. And if, they, if, they're, if their comment passes this, these five C's, then it might get considered. That's your litmus test, just in case you were wondering, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, uh, it gets dropped. Oh, Demetrius says, okay, sessions on the book. Wonderful, wonderful, yes. Yes, 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 Demetrius. Yes, 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 you're getting it. That is my heart. That is my heart. So, yeah, um, like I said, if there's something that you have specific questions on or something you believe you could benefit from coaching, contact me. Let's talk about it. Get you taken care of, um, hopefully, help you move along and be the best you you can be and show up as best you possibly can in every aspect of your life, particularly relationships, uh, interpersonal relationships, but life in general. Because um, you don't want to continue to make decisions at, and choices at your expense. Okay? So, yeah. Thank you, Demetrius. Thank you for the comments, guys. Because that's, that's, that's important to know that it's resonating and that, it's, um, that it matters. Okay? So, listen. Um, again, I'm going to wait because I was about to sign off a moment ago and <laughs> uh, someone had a comment. So, I don't want to be so fast. I don't want to be hasty. I want to um, make sure that we cover everyone. All right. You know, we were talking about growth, right? Oh, Chris says, uh, don't know for me, it was pouring so much in. That was at your expense. Yeah. 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 I mean, you see, you see, you see the, the compassion that everyone seems to have, the people in the group have for one another because it's relatable, right? And so, that's what we want to, that's what I want to remind you of, that what you're feeling is not 
wrong. It's not, it's not wrong that you pour into others. It's not wrong to sow into others, but that does not have to always be at your expense. We're talking about selfishness for a moment, okay? Because selflessness causes a struggle. And sometimes, although selflessness is good, it's good mostly. But there are times, and these, and what we're talking about today, where you have to be selfish. This is an intentional, selfish act. And I'm encouraging you to be selfish. Please consider being selfish for you. Okay? Because if you get you right, listen, let's do it this way. When you fly, what do they tell what does the flight attendant tell you? Put your mask on first before you go try to put someone else's on. That's less that's, that's disabled, unable to, can't do it themselves. Because what they understand is if you go try to help someone else first, you die. <laughs> okay? So you take care of you first. And then when you're done taking care of you, you go take care of someone else. Okay? Yeah. Well, you guys have some comments between each other. Okay. You need someone to point to. So we're empty. Chris says, I'm glad to see no more calling. Self-care. It's vital. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, Stacey. Self-care. Self-care. This is selfishness is sometimes self-care. It, it shows up like self-care. Selflessness takes a toll on our physical well-being as well as... Thank you, Michelle. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. It's like you, I think you mentioned earlier about thinking about the experiences, reflecting on the experience that you had and, okay, is this something that felt good, something I want to continue or something I don't need to do again? And that made to, and, and it's just about being honest with yourself about what that feeling and that experience was. Because in all these things, you must consider you. Cindy, you're welcome. I saw your thank you. I apologize for missing it. Um, you're absolutely welcome. I'm glad it helped. Um, but yeah, Michelle, selflessness is... Um, it, it can take a toll because if that's who you are as a person, listen, I know there are people who struggle with that because they want to make sure everyone else is good and they consider everyone else's feelings and how something is going to impact, impact them. And you think about how they may feel. And the problem is, excuse me, you haven't considered you and considering you means balancing it against how that other person may or may not feel and that's or may feel and that's fine for consideration but it does not have to be a determination okay it's fine for consideration but does not have to be a determination okay Korean and tanya having a conversation okay tanya let's get a amen pour something into me <laughs> this is reciprocity okay Okay. I'm glad you guys are connecting. This is great. This is great. So, any other comments? Consider me as a task. <laughs> I like it, Nikki. Uh, hey, Carol. How are you? I like it, Nikki. Consider you, yes. Make that your task. <laughs> I love it. Make considering you a task. Yes. I want you all to please make considering yourselves individually a task. I think that's a wonderful idea. Because tasks mean things that have to be completed, right? Not just kind of nice to do's. Yeah, kind of want to get that done. And I'd like you to complete it too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is great. This is great. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. I really, really do. You're welcome, Nikki. You're very welcome. I'm so glad it helps. And yeah, yeah. I, I, it means a lot to me. This is awesome. So, all right. I think we're going to try again. I'm going to wait for a second, but I think we're about to wrap it um, for, this, for this session of Sip and Show. And again, trusting you more. What is it going to take? Those five C's. Listen, you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'm Coach Raj, and I love, love. I will see you next week. Be sure to invite people. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Social distance, okay? 
and um, we'll see you next week, okay? You guys take care. Have a good weekend.